tradition <coughs> established by our founders, whether it be in, in the form of increasing greenhouse tomato production, working with workers to establish working education-based greenhouses, or develop a CSA program, we do not know for certain. This, is, this, this much is certain. We would like to preserve our family farm for <coughs> our father's legacy, legacy and our mother's home. We, can, we are committed to improving our business by creating new adventures of interest while maintaining the integrity and, and nature of our business and parents established a long, so long ago. We look forward to the possibility of working with the township in the future if it is deemed to be an agreeable venture to all concerned. Sincerely, Sandra Greenwich, the Fuller Blank of the Farm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Well, I was just going to say that um, there's a lot of steps before you can actually say, you know, you're definitely going to reserve it before, before the family might accept right. the price that's offered. Um, right. One of the next steps really would be to spend the money that we're, you know, I think it would come out of the trust fund to start the appraisals. And I believe two appraisals need to be done, and farmland appraisals are, are more costly than, you know, your average appraisal. So this is what we're basically asking now from the council is um, for you all to approve, hopefully, the um, process to pursue the pricing and all that and see if this is a feasible uh, venture. And obviously, we're also here to answer questions. I did see in the um, packet there was apparently a subdivision done a few years back, uh, maybe clear some lot lines. Mm -hmm. have, that been, have all the conditions of that been satisfied? Has that been finalized? Or? No. For, yeah, there was two on the parcel, on parcel two, right. the Garwood Westfield parcel, uh, two homes were divided off, one for Chris Kosaki, who's here, and the other for her sister Sandra, and uh, they're one and a half acres each, is that correct? Now they are, yeah. And um, I think that just that final little step of, of one of them wasn't completed right. for sort of technical issues with the attorneys involved. Right. Right. Um, so that's something that is also part of the process going forward, okay. finalizing that within the township. And we have also, just to let you know, we did um, ask Tom Ford last year to order an engineering study by Brian Slough, um, and he did do that, a preliminary engineering study on parcel two that is available. Um, Tom can get that for you. And uh, we have not done any studies yet on, on parcel one where the, where the uh, farm stand sits. And so, as Laura said, we're, we're at the very beginning of a long process. So, really, the direction that I'm looking for for council tonight is is how if there's interest, just pursue it. Pursue it at this point. Pursue it at this point. Just being Tom Ford beginning the the, the long arduous road and, and and getting just things together. Council, like, okay. uh, council, any questions or discussion? Or? I, I, I think I, it's great. That, I'm sorry, did I interrupt someone? That's okay. Go ahead. I think it's great the, the amount of, uh, as always, that the Open Space Committee has done. Right. And like all of our committees, they work very hard, but they have a lot of, a lot of intricate things, as, as Morris brought up, to do. And I think that we should fully support moving forward with this, uh, particularly as such we're only going to an analysis point at this point. We're actually not making a decision. Uh, and we, this is the best road to go ahead. I think we should go right ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to basically say thank you. I, I appreciate all the work that you've done. I know it's been going on for a really long time. It is an iconic farm. It's, it's an amazing place. Um, you know, any child who goes to the high school or you know, you, you pass it, and it's just it's part of our part of our nature growing up in Morristown. I think that's something well worth preserving. Um, so I would wholeheartedly support um, you know going forward with this and and, and seeing what we can do. I, I think this is really an incredible opportunity for us as a township. You know, there's so there's there's fewer and fewer towns that can say they have a vibrant working farm in their town. And, and we do have that. It's part of our history and I think that's absolutely worth preserving into the future. And you know, it just bookends so well with all of our, you know, green and buying local initiatives in our town. You know, it all it's a great opportunity. And I, and I do want to particularly mention Mara Dye 
Betty Brian Hutz and Barbara Rich, who have put a tremendous amount of effort into this and are way too modest to admit how hard it is. <laughs> so, uh, just wanted to say that, but yeah, I think we absolutely should go forward with this. I just think that too, with, with it being a family business, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm partial to family business, uh, being my, part of one yeah. for 43, 44 years now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's just something that you don't see a lot of. Um, you, right. see, you know, a lot of businesses come and go, but to have a family business stay in, intact for that long, I think is something that's amazing and special, and uh, something that okay. we need to really look at. Yeah, I definitely want to thank the Open Space Advisory Committee for all their work. Uh, that's a group that always works towards uh, improving our town, and it's uh, uh, you, you guys and, and Maura, you, you, I've worked, we've worked together for a while now, you, you embody what is, what is known as community spirit, you really do. Uh, I agree on as well as everyone else, just for all the reasons that everyone said, so um, like I said, I guess you can move forward with the, uh, okay. the next step, and uh, thank you very much, thank you man, God bless you, and uh, Okay, thank you. Moving to resident requests and presentations for items not listed on the agenda. Please feel free to come to the microphone, uh, state your name and address, and uh... Sure. Edwin Bank, 209 Parry Drive. As a individual, I often feel helpless vis-a-vis -vis some power bigger, greater than myself, but I've always concluded as a group, in this case a community of 20,000 people in Morristown, that I make a request to council to authorize a, a consent agenda to the effect of opposing a proposed acquisition, corporate acquisition of one reviled company of another reviled company in a reviled industry. And I refer, of course, to the proposed acquisition of Comcast of Time Warner Cable. The basis for the resolution would be on anti-monopolistic and economic grounds. And I would propose, if council would so agree to represent 20,000 citizens of Morristown, uh, send the resolution or whatever mechanism might be appropriate to Assemblyman Conway and Singleton, Senator Allen, Governor Christie, and the Bureau of Public Utilities on a federal level to Senator, Senator Medendez, Senator Booker, Congressman Runyon, the FCC, <coughs> Federal Communication Commission, and DOJ, Department of Justice. There may be other bodies or people, but those come to mind. And Exhibit A in economic grounds as an argument. I'm looking at an article from the New York Times business section of February 15, quick paragraph, and it's quoting David L. Cohen, a Comcast executive vice president, said Thursday, this is Saturday, a couple of Saturdays ago, in a conference call with reporters, quote, we're certainly not promising that customer bills are going to go down or even that they're going to increase less rapidly, close quote. 
How do you like those at? So if there's any doubt as to, well, you know, consolidation, save money, there you go. Then a couple days later, New York Times, again, out of the business section of February 16, brief uh, paragraph, and I quote now, Americans pay far more for broadband and TV service than people in most other industrial nations. According to data collected by the New America Foundation in Los Angeles, the cheapest monthly television, phone, and internet service costs about $80. That's eight zero. In Paris, a similar bundle sells for $32. That's three two. And in Seoul, Korea, guess how much? Fifteen dollars. That's one five. So, in conclusion, if you need any more evidence, that uh, I would hope that many, if not all of us, twenty thousand of us in Morristown, rich or poor, young or old, liberal, conservative, would stand behind council to represent us fighting large forces that otherwise, as individuals, we really are hopeless to attack and overcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bank. Sir. Mark Hines, 130 Bridgeboro Road. I just want to take the opportunity to commend Mr. Michelle. I think it was last Thursday or Friday, some very good documents came on the township website about the budget. And I've been looking through them, and I think they're very well written, very informative. So I, I think that's a step forward from previous years. I just want to thank you for that. Uh, Pete Miller, 518 Devon Road. I wasn't going to get up to say this, but in response to uh, Mr. Bay, Maybe you can help them out. Is there any update on Verizon Fias, the Morristown model? Not happening. End of story. Well, not coming anytime soon. Yeah. Okay. But maybe you can help them out there. There's your TV, though. Yeah. 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 Just thought, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not endorsing those things. Let me see. <laughs> uh, and I guess the, the other thing was the, uh, you know, the, the snow plowing that's uh, been. So far, at least in my neighborhood, it's been very good. Everything's been great, timely. Appreciate everything. I um, wanted to bring up, perhaps, now maybe I could be updated on this, but I know, I believe Chris and Stacy uh, had a program back in, I think it was 2011, a few years ago, about having like a pothole hotline or email contact so people yes. in the community could yes. send in, okay, yes. on Flynn Avenue or yes. Camden Avenue, there's... Oh yeah, There's, I go there every day. So, that's the radio tower. Um, so that's uh, there. Uh, as far as that water, somebody brought up the water in Linola, the, the Linola Shopping Center. Uh, that's always that's as Victoria said. I'll second that. It's always been an ongoing situation. Uh, I know that. Oh, got to share, Greg. I just you know, got to side swipe there. Uh, Greg and Victoria mentioned. Uh, of course, on that shopping center, I don't know if somebody to know, that the back of that shopping center is on the floodplain of the Pensacola Creek. Yes, it so it certainly is going to be flooded. And, but um, perhaps, I don't know if the town should get in touch with the owner about the gutters or just keep, I don't know, it's every time the, the ice and the snow, they just keep ripping off. So, yeah, yeah so maybe there's some, something like there. And uh, again, th uh, I want to thank, too, the town council for taking a the, the first step forward as far as this open space situation. I can remember back in 2000, 2001, the community rallied together and to uh, have open space throughout town. And it was a great, great, great time for all of us. We got a nine binding referendum on the, on the, uh, the polls for everyone to vote on. And uh, this is why I really appreciate with town council following through again, years later, you know, 13, 14 years later, and still going forward and uh, preserving open space in town. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Sir. Hello, 
Um, hello. Um, my name is Robert Zenick, and I live at 626 East Main Street. And I concur with Pete. Uh, I think it's great that we're taking steps to preserve open space in Morristown. So we do have a gift in the town having uh, a lot of open space that seems to be going away for development. And I think it's a great deal. You're right there. Um, on something old be uh, that I brought up before, I, I brought up about the, the trash men. That, uh, yes. And I think real slow. It takes me a long time to think. Perhaps when you say something to me tonight, maybe two hours from now, I'll fully dissect it. So, so I, I had to uh, think about some of the things. And several months ago, I brought up to Stacy Jordan. She was the mayor at the time. When we were going to, we were considering about privatizing our trash pickup, and she informed me that she would consider every possibility. And then I brought up at the meeting before, will the new trash collectors be required to be held to the same standard as our present guys, who are drug-free, Megan's Law compliant, criminal-free, and I was, I was told that, uh, by Mr. Chaccio, that uh, there's state requirements that all these people that work for a trash pickup are required to have. And I said, yes or no, will we be required? And you said, repeated, he says, they have to comply with state requirements. And I said, well, specifically, will you require them to be? And you said, I answered your question, sit down. That was your statement. So then Mr. I, I apologize Drolden, that it came off like that. Pardon me? I, I apologize if it came off like that. No, it didn't come off like that. That's what you said. Okay. It wasn't like the way it came off. Okay. That was specific. All right. So then Mr. Drolis said that he also concurred that there's state requirements for people who work for trash pickup. So, and you're sure, that's what you said, you are sure that they will be required to comply. So... I mean, comply, I comply with what? With the state requirements oh, yeah. that you said that the people well, who work the, on the, trash the, pickup. You said thing, oh, you're going a little too far with that. And we're going to do whatever the law requires, that's what you said. Well, you said that they would be, have to, re, have to comply with state requirements. And I specifically asked, will you require them to be? And you said, I answered your question, sit down, which you didn't, but okay, well, I needed a yes or a no. Well, I looked into that. There are no state requirements for the people who work on the back of the trash truck. In fact, they're picked up per diem. They go to a manpower place and pick up Joe Schmo today, another Joe Schmo tomorrow, and just what I raised about them not being uh, even citizens of the United States. They're not required to be citizens. They're not required to have criminal background uh, to be free of that. So I called up a couple, well, I know a mayor up north, so I called him, and they're exploring it. Mr. It's uh, Jack Smith in North Jersey. He says that their town is very concerned about MS-13. Do you know what MS-13 is, Ms. Jordan? No. Well, if you looked into it, like you said, you'd explore every possibility. No, I, wait, wait, I said we explore every possibility about keeping our workers. Keeping, no, keeping. no, no, you said we'll explore every possibility when I said, will they be required to be drug and alcohol and criminal free? You said you'd explore each one. I think you have me mistaken. I, I don't think that's exactly what I said. I, I told, we will explore every possibility well, of keeping our employees. That was the possibility. There was well, many, no, I, I pursued you further. And there were many said, options on I said, what we could have done. I you said, you will asked a question. Required? I'm going to give you an answer. You asked. What well, possibilities? We have lots of possibilities. We could fire all of our incentives. No, employees I didn't go for that. Keep them. We can keep one and fire the rest. We can keep two. We, those, are the, those are the possibilities we're talking about. I'm, I'm sorry. My, you, my, my question is pretty specific. You, well, Will the new people good. be required to be drug, alcohol, and criminal free? And we, we and gave you to our lawyer and told you. And he says that they'll state. have to comply with the state requirements, which there are in, which we were led to believe that there would be. So, in fact, we may not even have the same person today as we did yesterday. And for the people who don't know who MS-13 is, the Long Island, New York, is having a problem with gangs that infiltrate uh, lawn care, 
trash collection, where they used their jobs to case the neighborhoods. And they saw a substantial increase in crime. So telling me that you're going to make sure that they comply with state requirements is, well, I guess you're right. There are none. The only guys that have them are the CDL license guys that drive. The guys in the back don't. Mr. Z, let me, let me just say, first of all, um, I do remember your questions. I remember it specifically. And I remember my answer was, they'll do the best not to hire, I think it was drug offenders or regular law people, just like your company, my company, or any company does. This company uh, that, that how will that you know that they finish. will let me make, finish, do their best? Let me, I appreciate it. Let me finish. The company that's coming in to, do our, to, to pick up our trash has 32 years experience. They currently handle 15 towns. They, have, they build their business through reputation. If, if their crews came into towns and some of the crime went up, they wouldn't have any, any uh, uh, towns. I have children in this town uh, as well. And I, I, I have concerns. But like any contract, any contractor we hire, whether it's for trash, to cut our trees, overlay roads, whatever it is, they have their hiring standards, and that's their hiring standards. So to answer your specific question, we are not going to put into the contract if they have to do random drug testing, that their employees have to be subject to criminal background check and making law. We're not going to do that because they have a reputation, and we're going to trust that. So you're going to go on their reputation and on uh, not what you could require. I also <laughs> said, one second. I asked my question one second, Mr. Uh, but I also said at the last meeting that I reject the concept that trash men are any more prone to crime or drug use than any other contractor that we have, that we need our services. So you know, if we're going to have this conversation, then. Well, we're not saying that trash men themselves. We're talking about substituting a high-quality standard that we've imposed on our workers for, for something that has no standard, none. Now, you told me that you would, that, that, that they have to comply with regulations. And, and when I specifically asked you, now you're telling me that you're not going to put that in the contract. That's the first time you've said that. All along, you were saying I answered your question. Sit down. In well, fact, you said that twice. I, just, well, I apologize. I just, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I apologize. Well, I you. Uh, well, I'm not soliciting your apologies. Well, I don't care. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I'll give it to you. Anyway, but, I'm uh, not. Well, but, perhaps, but, and perhaps but, but, when you said that, you should have took taken that on your own before we have this exchange. Mr. Zenick, Mr. Zenick um, I actually looked into a lot of uh, different towns because I was very concerned about. I think some of the concerns that you have. What was the performance in other places? And Medford, for example, has the exact same group that we have, that we will have when they come in. There is a citizen act action group that's considering in Medford going back to private trash collection, the, the yeah, public trash collection. I'm not collection. aware of that. I'm not aware of the people who did, who I did speak to, who are in charge of administrating, just as we are in charge of administrating, that we will be in charge of our group, our staff will be. Mr. Zenick. Uh, as well, uh, I don't know if you were in attendance of the meeting with that we discussed this. When the trash uh, group comes in, I believe Mr. Crew has said that he will arrange for the people who will be delivering the trash, the company, Carsworth, I believe it's called, to go to different places so that we roll this out in a very open way and people can ask questions of or, or understand from that company what they are going to do, and you could actually bring up your concerns of that. Well, I, I know they what pick day by day, day sir. Point, sir. I know they point. do, sir. I, I know that they're not going point, to keep sir. the same person. On a third point, sir. Yes, sir, third point. Right. Each of the people who at least drive for those companies will be required to have a CDL, and there are definite requirements for people who have a CDL. Which, is which I stated, yes specific type of license, so there are some requirements that are of, of value in this. And but the people on the back are not. And this is the first time, even during this whole contract, when we were considering the contract, you, you assured us that they, you, that they were going to be held to state standards, and now you're telling us that you are going by the reputation of the company, and this is the first time you said, 
No, there's going to be no, we're not checking into them at all. And we're not going to make that a requirement. That's the first time you said that. And we're talking about transparency.